Hi guys, it's Kim. I'm back with Floss Tube number 12. It is April 15th. This is my co-host Hopper, aka Grasshopper. He's a blue fronted Amazon. And I've shown a quick clip of him. I think it was in video two. Um, but today I decided he could be here along with me. He hasn't been in this room before, so he's a little nervous. He's not sure what's going to happen. So you might see some unsure behavior from him. Um, so Amazons, as a rule, are very easy to read body language once you're actually paying attention and know what different things mean. So I'll try to give him some toys. We'll see if he'll actually play with them. And he likes to hold it, hold it up and, and scratch his head because he can't uh, reach those feathers to groom himself. We've got some other things here to so hopefully keep him busy. All right. As I said, it's April 15th. You dropped it. And we'll see what happens. We'll see if he has anything to say. Or if he wants a basket. He likes to tear these apart. These are uh, completely natural baskets that don't have any finish on them or any nails or anything. So he likes to shred those. Okay, stitching. Or we play fetch. Or re reverse fetch where he drops it and I pick it up and he thinks it's funny. And what we just put in your basket, in your bucket. You drop it again, I'm not going to pick it up. There he goes. See? This is what it's like to, to own a bird. They only think of themselves. So they don't think it's destructive for them to actually tear something up. That's an unsure sound that he's making. So we'll just let him chill out. I'll give him a couple toys in his bucket. So, Okay. Um, as I said, Spartan Stitcher on Instagram. I'm also a Ravenclaw Prefect in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature. And I'm the admin, one of the admins to uh, AMP's group, Full Coverage Fanatics. And she's, she recently renamed her floss tube to, I believe it's Fiber Floss and Fiction Podcast. So I will link that below. Okay. So homework last week was friend versus friend in magical stitches. You had to uh, do 500 stitches each on two different pieces that were vying for your attention. My first piece was Friends Forever by Ann Stokes. This is a Hade and I worked on it the previous week for homework and wanted to um, put some more stitches into it. This is tent stitching so I had to do a thousand instead of 500. Hopper doesn't like towels or anything that res resembles a towel, so I have to be careful. There's the whole piece. And we'll make it smaller so he gets less nervous. So there's the page I was working on. I filled in all the gaps over here and made all those thicker. So now there's just a bit more uh, maroon and reds to put in there. And then this is wood green, like a doorpost. So that's Friends Forever. A thousand tent stitches on that. Um, and then the second second piece that was vying for my attention is my whip that is uh, for the 90 day challenge in Full Coverage Fanatics and also by the numbers 2400. <coughs> this is Oh Baby where I'm cropping off this entire side of background. And I was still working on the green last week. Well, I finished all the green, at least until you get into the part that gets shaded to meet into the face. And I've got two colors done in the face, started on a third color. So you'll see it's there's lots of colors in that face. But it's still not too difficult to, to follow down the page and stitch on it. Um, I I'm only 300 stitches shy of doing 4,800 stitches, 10 stitches this month for by the numbers 2,400. So I've already almost met 2,400 on that. And I'll continue to work on it every single day. After that was done, 
um, I decided to pull out a small and try to finish it and also um, accomplish one of the ultimate stitching tasks which was uh, seven players in Quidditch. Um, I pulled out Dragonfly Egg. It's a Mill Hill all beaded kit. And I chose this one because if you ever watch a dragonfly actually fly around, he kind of hovers and zigzags, similar to how a snitch flies. And also this, this egg is about the size of a snitch. I'm sorry. I keep making them nervous. So there's the finish on that. Um, I was up here just above the, where the stripes start. And so I did all this and got down to here was a thousand and then just finished it off. So that is my fourth finish for the year. So far I'm averaging one finish a month, which is just fine with me. It's all about progress. And I did have moon hair as a finish. That's, that's a big finish. There are a few mistakes in this, but that's because the black beads, these bluish purple beads, the green, the darker green beads that are the stems and the white beads were all in one bead pack. And there was way more black beads than I ever needed. So there's a preponderance of black beads. And so with those and the blue, I didn't even realize that the darker green was a color in there. So for some of the areas where it should have been darker blue or that bluish purple, I got some of the green ones in my mistake. It's okay. I wasn't going to take apart over 400 stitches to fix it. So, um, I will probably buy more of those in the future for the, the series. Um, that's all I stitched last week because, uh, in last week's video, I told you that my oldest daughter, there you go. He's scratching his head. My oldest daughter was, oh, it's okay. The dog scared you. Go lay down. The dog wanted to come in and see what was going on and that scared him because he hasn't been in this building in this room before normally him and the dog get along just fine oh, it's okay shake it off yes i'm getting another popsicle stick these have been dyed with uh non-toxic bird safe dyes like one of his favorite things um okay so last week my daughter was homesick with a fever, probably the flu, that was on Monday, and she never had a, a fever in the mornings, but by, you know, lunchtime, it was 101 degrees Fahrenheit, and it just was happening every single day, and she was, she had a wet cough, but she was doing pretty good, she wasn't, she wasn't miserable as long as I kept the fever down. By Wednesday, we were on day seven with a fever, and it just wasn't getting better, and I didn't think a flu should last that long, so... I took her to the clinic on base, pediatric clinic, and uh, they listened to her and listened to everything I had to say and uh, took an x-ray and blessed you. And uh, turns out she had developed viral pneumonia because this the whole time that she had been sick with the flu, she wasn't fully coughing to try to clear the mucus. And so all that mucus was just sitting in her lungs and it developed viral pneumonia which I guess is the best kind of pneumonia you can have. Um, so even though she'd had the flu for about six days, um, this was one of the special circumstances where Tamiflu was called for. So they gave that to her. And so she'd been taking that all through this weekend. Um, Saturday was her first fever-free day in over a week. And she continued that Sunday. And today she went back to school. So I was happy that happened um and so far none of the other none of the rest of the family has shown any symptoms um but i'm still being cautious uh i have a headache right now and i know that was one of her first symptoms bless you so i'm watching my own temperature um so i did a lot of reading and sitting around and trying to you know mental escape through the setting in books rather than uh, stitching because I was trying to keep the two girls from fighting with each other and trying to keep them occupied and so I just didn't get a lot of stitching done last week. Um, and that goes into this week's homework. Uh, we are visiting Hogsmeade. Um, there are three different options. 
option one is you only visit one store and you do uh, 1,000 stitches. You have to explain why for all these these options. It's, it's partly a written assignment. So you have to explain how your, your whip fits and why you're staying in that one store. That's for option one, 10 points. Option two, you visit each of 10 stores, 100 stitches each, and explain how your whip fits, like why you're going to each of those 10 stores. You don't have to complete option two. You can only visit, you know, if you can't get all 10 stores done, that's fine. Uh, you got two of them there. Um, and points wise, if you can attempt option two, you can still earn more points on the other two options, even if you don't complete all 10 stores. Uh, there's an additional five points for a total of 25 points for option two, if you get all 10 stores done. Option three is you stay at Hogwarts. Um, everyone's permission slip has been signed, so that's not your reasoning. You have to find a different reason. Stitch 100 or uh, 1,500 stitches and earn 10 points. Now, I think I looked at the stores and looked at all my whips, and I think I'd be able to fit eight of the 10 stores in, but I'm not really in that mood to work on... Um, different pieces and keep switching it up this week. I just want to work on one because I have some personal goals for the month that I need to meet. So I'm going to go with option three um, because we have had illness in our house. We're still under quarantine to make sure that no one else gets sick and we don't spread germs to anybody else. So that's why we're staying at Hogwarts. So I'm going to work on Ink Circles, Big Red Chip of Life. This is the piece that I'm um, st stitching to represent our time here in North Dakota. Excuse me while I grab popsicle sticks. And uh, so I'm doing one page every three months. I finished page one for January and March and I started page two. So I need to put more into it. Work on page two. And this is 28 count mushroom even weave by MCG Textiles stitched in DMC 38. Oh, eight. This is a teal green. It's really hard to photograph. Every time I try to take a picture, it turns blue. But it's a teal green, I promise you. I've got the bobbin here. It's a teal green. I don't know how that's showing. So I've got to start on page two. I'll probably work on the uh, top border some more and see where 1500 stitches takes me. This border and the wave border, and then we'll see where we are. So that's what I'll do for this week's homework. Um, let's see. Uh, my friend Debbie that I gave moon hair to, she did get moon hair framed. It was completely up to her what she wanted to do with them. Um, and she took them to her local Hobby Lobby and they've done an excellent job before on pieces uh, framed for her. That was a yawn. And uh, she chose a lavender mat with a whitewash frame. It looks really cool. If you want to go see it, check out uh, Spurt and Stitcher on Instagram, and I posted it there. Let's see. Oh, I brought a couple of uh, previous finishes to show you, if I can not make him nervous. <coughs> the first one is Disney Princesses, the designer's Wee Little Stitches off Etsy, the original Pixel People designer. Um... If you notice, there is one princess missing, and that is Mulan. Per my daughter's request, she didn't think Mulan was pretty enough, and I don't even think she's seen the movie. So, I finished all these and left a space for uh, Moana, waiting for um, the designer to update the pattern, which she did. And then the Dream Big Princess I got from a book of motifs. Uh, I just looked at one of their alphabets that I liked. And I did the math for how big it was going to be and figured out where to center it on the pattern. And I chose colors that were already used in the design. So Dream is used in Rapunzel, Big is used in Cinderella, and Princess in, uh, it was either Ariel or Sleeping Beauty. And I, you know, reversed the colors just to try to tie it all together. Um, I did enter this last year in the Nebraska State Fair. And... It did win a ribbon, but I can't remember uh, what ribbon it was. This is on um, 32 count 
Lugana in Mercedes by Picture This Plus. Uh, the only other thing about the design I changed is I did use Krennic for Elsa's cape. You can see a little bit. It's got some sparkle there. Everything else is as charted. And then the other finishes I have. In the Nebraska State Fair, you can enter anything that you've worked on or that you finished in the last three years. So I wasn't ever restricted to only what I worked on in that year. So last year I entered these two as a set. Um, they have several different classes and they limit it to two entries per class per person. So I already had two entries in the class that was up to 28 count. So I had to uh, be creative in how to enter these. And so they had a class for series or a set of items. And so I entered these as a set. These are by Dona Stitch on Etsy. I have Brave. I'm sorry, Hopper. I stitched this first. This was actually before I started my first haid because I wanted to see how I like tent stitch. Um, so this is on 25 count Lugana, done in tent stitch. I did not grid this or anything because of the big box of color. I didn't really have to. Um, and it worked out really well. It took me 31 days to stitch. Do a bit of close up. As you can tell, just like in my haids, there's a little bit of fabric show through. The tent stitching only really shows up as different in the white parts of all the trees and bushes. Other than that, you can't really tell that it's tent stitched and not full cross. And then here's Frozen. This one I, I finished last year. Um, you can see the tent stitch in some of the snowflakes, whereas this diagonal looks totally different than this one. And same thing. It's only on the diagonals that you see it and a little bit maybe in their faces. But other than that, it works out and it went a lot faster than full cross. I did make some color changes in this after um, Darling Bluebell. Uh, Mika finished her uh, version of Frozen. She changed some of the colors in here. And once I looked at the cover pattern, there's like random areas of pink and other colors that weren't used in the castle. So I moved some colors around so they would like the same color wouldn't be touching another area of the same color. So I think it was this yellow area and then these, these triangles and some of these. I had to kind of switch them around so it made sense. So, and then... Um, there's, there was another extra blob down here that I took out and just kind of smoothed out this little flourish by his feet, just like, uh, Mika did on hers. So those I entered as a set, I believe they got third place. I can't remember. Okay, so plans. I'm going to work on Big Red Ship of Life. Um, after that, I still, for the month, I want to get some work in on, um, Guardian Angel by Lavender and Lace, and I haven't even started working on Kindred Spirits. That's the, the piece with the two horses on it um, for the zoo and aquarium theme in Full Coverage Fanatics and by the numbers 1200. So I need to work on all those. We'll see how many I get to this week. Can I pet you? So you always ask to pet. And he lets me scratch his head. If you have a parrot, it's only recommended to pet their head and neck because any other place that you touch their body can be um, mis can be a sexual touch for the bird. And you don't want to sexually frustrate them. You're not sure, huh? Um, he is bonded to me just because I've taken the most, most care of him and pay him the most attention. Um, He'll only step up for me off his cage, but once he's away from his cage, he'll step up for my husband. If he he is fully flighted, and if he flies anywhere and, and lands somewhere, like crashes or goes somewhere he's not familiar, he'll step up for anybody. So, but even though he's bonded to me, he always growls at me when he steps up. Like, he needs to file a protest, but he'll still do it. Huh. You step up. And so there's your growl. 
He's touching me. He's not not actually hurting me. Step up. There you go. He prefers to always step up on the left forearm. He, he's not really fond of hands, which is another reason why he gets nervous. Like, I can ask to pet him. But, um, if, if you go like this, he gets real nervous. Right now, he's nervous because he doesn't know what's going on. Can we show him the other trick? We do foot, foot, other one, no, other one, other one, no, I'm not going to scratch you, give me your foot, foot, it doesn't hurt, other one, foot, no, he's just too uncomfortable, we play the foot game because he was scared of hands, so that's how we kind of uh, trained him to be more comfortable, um, so, now, you, now, now they can't see you. You're out of range. Step up. Thank you. Yes. And he'll put my hair. But again, he's uncomfortable, so he's not going to do it in here. Say, we would have done better if I would have been at my desk, huh? Right now, you just want to escape. Get to somewhere you know. Yes. Um, his beak is a little longer than it should be because um, he's got fatty liver disease, which is common for Amazons. Um, that means that normally a bird will wear down their beak um, just by chewing on things. But with fatty liver disease, both their upper beak and lower beak grow faster than they can trim it down. Um, and so we, when we trim his nails... Wrapping him in a towel that he is absolutely petrified of. I also trim his beak. Um, and I only do it myself because I've watched a vet do it many, many times. And you only do a little bit at a time. Right? Yes. Can you forgive me? Okay. Say goodbye. Hopper does say his name, but only when uh, he's begging for food. He'll say Hopper. He can, he can wolf whistle, but I don't know if he'd do it right here. Pretty bird. I can't whistle myself, but he knows how to. No, he's not going to do it right now. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good week, um, and I will see you later. Happy stitching.